General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, presents The Lone Ranger. With a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hey! When boys line up to run a race, galloping garden sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen... Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. For several weeks after leaving Springfield, Missouri, the journey of a big wagon train was uneventful. One night, as the pioneers gathered around a large campfire within the encircled wagons, the wagon master, Will Halden, stood up to speak. Well, Ben, as you all know, we're not very far from our destination. But that doesn't mean we're going to relax our vigilance so far as the Indians are concerned. As a matter of fact, the territory we'll pass through during the next few days is said to be overrun by a hostile red ski. Terry Keller says there isn't any danger. And he thinks we're foolish to follow the Butterfield Trail when there's a shorter route from Phantom Hill on. Terry Keller is a young, headstrong fool. Well, it's not fair to say such a thing about Terry. At least you ought to wait until he's here to defend himself. Well, he ought to be here. Instead of taking up with Carver and Beauvais and going away like he did. Harry said they were going to do some trail scouting, Will. <laughs> What's he know about scouting? Or the other two, for that matter. Just because Beauvais and Carver have made one trip out here, they seem to think they know it all. Right. Well, I suppose Terry wants to be sure everything goes right because his father financed the trip. Well, I was put in charge of this wagon train, and what I say goes... Unless you all get together and vote somebody else in my place. That's all right now. Come along, Lucy. On the trail ahead, Terry Keller, a young man about 25, was returning to the wagon camp with Beauvais, a Frenchman, and Carver, a rough-talking, heavy-set man. As they rode, Carver was saying, Terry, you and the others listen to Will Halton. It'll take weeks longer, maybe, to get where you're heading. You can take our word for it. That branch trail we just showed you'll get the wagons there safer and quicker. Hey, Bobe. But of course. We have traveled these short routes, and we know it is the far better way to go. Is there danger if we leave the well-traveled Butterfield Trail? Ah, the Indians are well under control now. Carver, it's right, Terry. Talk to the others, Terry. Get them on your side. They'll listen to you. Convince them the short route is better all the way around. All right. I'll see what I can do. Come on, get up. Get up. 
Late that night after the camp had quieted, Bove and Carver slipped away and rode west along the trail to meet an Indian scout and send word to Chief Lightfoot that the wagons would be certain to take the so-called short route, a route leading into wild and unpatrolled country, which was ideal for an Indian attack. As the two men rode, Bove was saying, What do we get out of all this, Carver? All the cash and valuables in the wagon train, and there's plenty. The Comanches get the guns, ammunition, and horses. But if Will Alden is still wagon master and insists on going the regular route... I've been putting the idea in Terry's mind to get the men to vote out Alden and elect me as wagon master. You? <laughs> oh, that is laughable, mon ami. Yeah? Well, I'll be able to stop the wagons for the night just where the Comanche chief wants them to stop. And you and I'll slip away just before the attack. Come on, let's hurry. Get up there. Yeah. After meeting a Comanche brave and sending the message to Chief Lightfoot, Carver and Beauvais returned to the wagon camp. All the next day, as they rolled slowly over the prairie, Terry talked to the pioneers one by one. That night, after the wagons were circled in camping formation, a man who had been chosen as spokesman called for a vote to replace Will Halden as wagon master. After the voting, he spoke to the group. The voting shows that Carver is to replace Will Holden as wagon master. I hope there's no hard feelings. Well, go ahead. Follow Carver from now on. As for me, I'm taking my wagon and leaving the train with any who want to go along. I'm still going to follow the Butterfield Trail. Early the following morning, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, rode the Butterfield Trail eastward toward Fort Phantom Hill. It's not far to Fort now, King Osabi. Maybe two, three miles. That's right, Toto. We'll stop and see our friend, Colonel Davis. Ah. Look, King Osabi, wagons coming this way. Hmm, only three of them. Then shoot. Maybe think we outlaw. Oh, 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 stop and wait, Toto. Don't draw your gun. We're not outlaws, if that's what you think. Don't listen to him, Will. I've heard about the masked outlaws out this way. Will, maybe he's telling the truth. Maybe they aren't outlaws. Of course, he is wearing a mask. Oh, wait a minute, Fushi. I remember hearing about a masked hombre when we lived out here before. He was said to ride a white stallion and carry silver bullets. My gun belt is filled with silver bullets. What's your horse's name, mister? Silver. Lucy, he's the one I heard about. Why, mister, you must be the Lone Ranger. That's right. Come on, boy. Well, mighty glad to meet you. My name is Will Holden. This is my wife, Lucy. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Holden? This is Toto. How? How do you do, sir? I'm surprised that only three wagons made the trip west, Mr. Holden. You'd run into hostile Indians. Oh, we had a big wagon train as far as Phantom Hill. Oh, what happened to the others? Well, it's a long story, mister. But if you have a few minutes, I'll tell you all about it. Go right ahead. Briefly, Will Holden told the Lone Ranger and Toto what had taken place. When he finished, the masked man spoke. The trail the others have taken isn't really shorter. It's far rougher. Also, there's more danger running into hostile Indians. Heavy? That sounds terrible. I wonder why Mr. Carver and Mr. Beauvais think it's the better and shorter route. That's what I wonder, Mrs. Holden. What type of men are they, Mr. Holden? I'll answer that, mister. I figured to be a couple of no-good pole cards. I pulled the wool over young Keller's eyes and got him to side with them against Will Holden. Now, take it easy, Jake. Yeah. Terry Keller has the right to his own opinion? No, he hasn't. His father put you in charge. He should have stuck by you. No telling what those three will lead the wagon train into on that other route. I suggest you turn back and wait at Fort Phantom Hill for another wagon train coming west. Yeah. Otto and I'll turn south and take a shortcut to the other trail. The sooner we locate the other wagons, the better... We'll get word to you later. Adios. 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 Come on, We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Now, free stamp offer from Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal. Free for one special Cheerios box top, a 64-page guide packed with information on stamp collecting, plus 10 genuine foreign stamps to start your collection. Begin the world's most thrilling hobby, collecting stamps from strange, exciting, faraway lands all over the globe. You'll want this handy 1955 stamp guide for your very own. It contains many pages in full color, gives you tips on how to collect stamps, 
how to start your own stamp club, and even includes a whole illustrated section on U.S. stamps. Get your 64-page guide plus 10 stamps free for only one special Cheerios box top. And on the back of the same Cheerios package, find still another offer, 300 foreign stamps plus stamp album for only 25 cents in box top. All stamps supplied by world's largest stamp firm, H.E. Harrison Company of Boston. Act now. Look for the Cheerios package with a free stamp offer on front. Now to continue. The route the wagon train had taken branched off the Butterfield Trail east of Phantom Hill and ran southward for several miles. Then it swung west and ran parallel to the main trail. The Lone Ranger and Tonto took a shortcut and managed to reach the lower trail in time to see the wagon train approaching. Oh, 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 easy, oh, oh, oh. There come the wagons, Tonto. They're still some distance away. Uh, so far, nothing has happened to them. We we'll ride ahead along the trail and look for possible danger. Oh, get them off. The new trail ran through rolling country, and as the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode, they noticed the fresh hoof marks of one horse. A short time later, as they topped a rise, they saw a rider just disappearing over the low hill ahead. A few moments passed before they reached the top of the low hill and saw him turn from the trail into the woods. Easy, Silver. Easy, brother. The masked man and Indian also left the trail and rode cautiously through the woods for some distance. Then they approached the edge of a low mesa. They stopped and dismounted. He said to be Hoof marks go right to the edge of this mesa. Come on, Pop. Uh-huh. A moment later, the two men saw that the hoof prints followed a steep, narrow path to a valley below, in which there was an Indian camp. Using field glasses, they saw a white man talking to the Indian chief in sign language. Tonto watched, then said, Kimasabi, yes, white fellow tell chief about wagons. Him say there are many rifle, guns, much ammunition. And he's from the wagon train. Ah. Now, chief makes sign. Say, Indian attack from behind when wagons reach river. Tonto, it will be a massacre. We must get help. You ride to Fort Phantom Hill. It will take those wagons several hours to reach the river. The troopers may have time to get here. Ah, uh, may go now. Adios. Adios. <laughs> After Tonto left, the Lone Ranger mounted Silver and rode out to the trail. Oh, boy. Then he headed eastward to meet and warn the pioneers. Come on, Silver! Meantime, Tonto started back along the shortcut trail. He had ridden about a mile. When rounding a bend, he saw a Comanche scouting party approaching. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Round, scout, round, fella. Quickly, he turned his horse around and started back. Get him, scout. The Comanche <laughs> saw him and urged their pony to a gallop. Tonto glanced back. Then, feeling sure he could outrun his pursuers, gave scout his head. But at that moment, more Indians rode from the bordering woods ahead of him and barred his path. Realizing he was trapped, Tonto pulled to a stop. Oh, scout. Oh, fella. Oh, How? Me ride in peace. Not want trouble with Comanche. Yo, not Comanche. What you do here? Anakama! Sama, Sama! Braves say, we take you, Chief Lightfoot. If you move, you die now. Take guns. Fire! Back on the trail and slowly moving westward... Harry Keller rode at the head of the wagon train with Beauvais. Where did Carver go? He has gone ahead to do some scouting, Jeffy. He should be back. Uh, I wish Holden had stayed with us. Even though he's no longer in charge, I still... Say, hey, look. A rider coming toward us. Eh? Must be Carver returning. No, it cannot be. He doesn't ride a white horse. Or... Sacre! That rider is masked. He must be a highwayman. I'll stop him with a bullet. No, wait. We have 30 men to his one. He can't harm us. Better stop the wagon. Stop the wagon! Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Easy, silly big fella. You are covered, monsieur. Do not reach for your guns. I come as a friend. Who's in charge here? The new wagon master isn't here at the moment. Uh, What is it you want? I'm Terry Kelly. Well, Holland told me about you. I came to warn you of danger. The Comanche plans to attack. Why should we listen to you, an outlaw? This is some trick, Terry. Do not pay any attention. I'm not an outlaw, and this isn't a trick. Wait a minute. 
You mentioned Will Holland. Yes, I met him on the other trail earlier today. He told me all that took place. Terry, we get the men to tie up this masked man, and we turn him over to the first sheriff we meet. Just a minute. If you talk to Holland, he must consider you a friend. Yes, he does. You must heed my warning. A heavy set man went to the command camp a while ago and talked to the chief. Heavy set man? He must be Carver. And you. I heard you call out, come on, Silver. Yes, that's right. My horse is named Silver. My father told me of a masked man who rode a white stallion by that name. A man who carried two fancy guns and used silver bullets. Here's a silver bullet he gave Dad. I carry it now. Here's one like it for my gun belt. You must be the Lone Ranger. I am. Evidently, Carver is a traitor and plans to lead you into a trap. The attack with the Indians will take place at the river. River? Yes, it's about ten miles from here. So, Carver would betray us, eh? And all this time I trusted him as a friend, almost as a partner. And you knew nothing about all this, Beauvais? Of course not. But, but what are we to do? Turn back and head for Fort Phantom Hill. The Comanche camp is about two miles from here. Let's hope they don't find out the wagons have turned back. All right, we'll do whatever you say, mister. I agree with you, Terry. Let us start them back at once. I ride back and tell the others. Get it, get it back. Beauvais played his part so well that neither the Lone Ranger nor Terry suspected what he intended to do. The Frenchman rode toward the rear of the line of wagons and told each driver to turn back. After all the wagons had turned, he waited until they moved past him. After the last of them had gone by, Beauvais turned hurriedly and rode into the woods. Meanwhile, at the Comanche camp, Tonto, tied hand and foot, was a prisoner in one of the teepees. Realizing what would happen if the troopers weren't warned, he struggled for some time to loosen his hands, but without success. No, no use. Ropes heap plenty tight. intently as the chief and the other Comanches discussed the situation. He understood their language and heard the chief say his braves would soon start in pursuit of the wagons and attack them on the open plain at dusk. Tonto looked about him frantically for some way to get loose. At first it seemed hopeless. Then his eyes rested on a double-edged tomahawk, securely wedged into the center post of the teepee. He struggled to his feet, hopped to the post, then turning his back, worked the rope on his wrists against the protruding sharp edge of the tomahawk. They hope no one come in the rope frayed, strand by strand, until finally it parted. <clears throat> My hands free now. Next me on tie feet. Just as he loosened the rope on his ankles, he saw the shadow of an approaching figure. Quickly, he lay down and waited. Then the Indian who had captured him and taken his guns entered. Soon me take you out. Tie you to post. Chief say you die for what you do. As the Indian moved close, Tonto suddenly went into action. He reached out, grabbing the surprised Comanche and pulling him to the ground. Not die. This keep you quiet. The Indian went limp, and Tonto took back his own guns. Next, he took the fallen savage's war bonnet to use as a partial disguise and placed it on his head. He used his hunting knife to cut an opening in the back of the wigwam. Making sure he wasn't observed, he quickly headed for a nearby grove and soon made his way to the horses where he found Scout. A moment later, he mounted. Then, discarding the war bonnet, hurriedly rode away. Get him up, Scout! Later, the Lone Ranger rode at the rear end of the wagon train to watch for the Comanches in case they followed. Toward dusk, the wagon stopped and circled for the night. The circle had just been completed when the Indians, a hundred strong, appeared over a rise. The Comanches are coming! Every man to his post! Comanches began circling the wagons, using what guns they had and firing blazing arrows. The masked man was everywhere at once, advising, helping. Keep down, make every shot count. Watch out for those blazing arrows. Mister, we haven't much chance. Don't give up, Terry. They haven't many guns. We must hold them on. For some time, the battle raged. The Comanches rode in an ever-closing circle. Many of the pioneers had been wounded, and Terry Keller felt certain the end was near for them all. No use, mister. We can't hold out. This is my fault. I'd listen to Will Hall and There's no time to blame yourself, Terry. I saw Beauvais and Carver at the edge of the grove with the Indian chief. They got us into this. Yes, I should have realized Beauvais was in with Carver on the plans. They're too much for us, I tell you. A bugle. That means troopers. Yes, I see them. Numbering almost 200 moved in from two sides. 
Their sudden appearance took the Comanches by surprise, and though the savages fought desperately, they were soon subdued. Those who could still ride tried to escape but failed. The fight had come to an end. In the battle, Carver, Beauvais, and the chief were captured. Later, within the circle of wagons, Will Halden, who had come with the soldiers, spoke to the pioneers. Uh, Lynn, I understand you want me to take over as wagon master again. We sure do. Let me have a better one. Then thank you. Carver and Beauvais were captured and are going back to the fort as prisoners, along with the Comanche chief. It serves them right. Thanks to the masked man and his Indian friend Tato, who came to the fort with the news, a massacre has been averted. Well, 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 well. I... I want to apologize for the way I acted. The masked man told me you fought mighty well, Terry. I reckon you won't be taken in so easily the next time by traitors like Carver and Beauvais. That's right. I think we should give the masked man a vote of thanks right now. The Indian, too. Hey, well, wait a minute. Going? It's uh, too late for that. They've already left with the troopers, Terry. Well, Dad sure will be surprised and happy to hear that I actually met the Lone Ranger. He's a true American. And an hombre who believes always in the right. We're mighty lucky to have a friend like the Lone Ranger. We'll return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, Railroad Robberies. You know, an exciting way to learn about foreign countries is to study their coins. And Wheaties' special foreign coin offer is really terrific. Right now, Wheaties is offering you two different sets of genuine foreign coins. There's the international set with 15 coins from countries like Germany, Iceland, and South Africa. And the mystery set with 15 coins from faraway lands like Angola, Turkey, New Zealand. Remember, these coins are real money you could spend right now in these countries. And each coin set comes in a special folder. A map inside shows you where the coins are used and gives information about the country. Each coin has been cleaned and polished. Sounds like these genuine coins would cost a lot, doesn't it? But you can get each set for only 25 cents and one Wheaties box top. Look for directions on the back of Wheaties special foreign coin packages at your grocer's now. Hurry, start your foreign coin collection today. A man whom the Lone Ranger and Tonto had hunted for murder successfully planned a trap for the masked man under unusual circumstances. This is a story packed with action and thrilling suspense. Be sure to listen. a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by Joe Mills. Starting May 30th, listen to The Lone Ranger every day, Monday through Friday, on another network. <laughs>